Web 3.0 is one of the best industries for developers to start their career in 2022. There's a massive talent shortage in this space, making blockchain one of the highest paying skills in tech for all skill levels. Whether you're an experienced developer already trying to transition into the Web 3.0 space, or if you're just learning to code from scratch, it's absolutely insane. And in this video, I'm going to outline how you can break into the blockchain industry from wherever you're starting from with a proven strategy to land your first job. So if you're just joining for the first time, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. And I've helped thousands and thousands of people become real world blockchain developers. I've been on every side of this problem as a freelancer, having a regular developer job and now hiring developers myself. And I think you're going to get a lot of this video. Make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have a master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about a proven system for, you know, landing your first blockchain job, okay? So I want to qualify this a little bit. There's lots of different ways to skin this cat, all right? But most people watching this video are just looking for something that's going to work. And that's why I'm going to call this a proven system, okay? I'm going to outline what it is step by step and actually break each step down in this video so that you can follow this no matter where you're starting from. If you're a developer already trying to get into Web 3.0 or you're just, you know, starting to code from scratch. So let's first talk about the timeline for this. Like, how long does it take? That's one of the most common questions I get, like, how long does it take to become a blockchain developer? You know, whenever you're first ready to start applying for jobs and then going to actually look for those jobs, the timeline where you start that and then you land and get hired, what time is that? Let's not talk about how long does it take for you to learn blockchain skills. I got lots of other videos about that. You can just check them out on my YouTube channel. Let's talk about the process of beginning to look for a job and actually landing one. So there's lots of variables in how long this could take, but let's just set some sort of expectation because, you know, work tends to take the amount of time that you give it. And if you set yourself a deadline, it's gonna be way more likely that you can accomplish that goal. I think it's realistic for many people to accomplish this in about 90 days, okay? So once you're ready to start applying for jobs to when you could actually land a job, I'm going to give that about a 90 day window because there's things that have to happen inside of there. You know, there's back and forth, there's interviews, and that should be enough time. Now, a couple caveats here. One, that's going to be an average. So it could take you a little bit longer, but if it does, does it really matter as long as you get the result that you're wanting? And number two, that's if you're trying to optimize for the amount of time that it takes. So if you're not just trying to get the absolute most out of your paycheck, you're just willing to get your foot in the door and get started, you can always negotiate some things down just to get that first result. So when are you ready to start this process? Because that's a question I get a lot. It's like, hey, when should I apply for my first blockchain job? Well, I'm going to call that the starting line, okay, for going through the process that I'm outlining in this video. And I would say no matter where you're starting from, whether you're a coder already trying to transition to Web 3.0 or you're a brand new developer, you're ready to start looking for jobs whenever you've built a real world project on your own in an unguided way without the aid of a tutorial. And then you've taken that project and you've put it into a portfolio the other people can see and use because why is it so important? Well, how do you get your first job without experience? I mean, if you're a developer already, you got some experience, that's good to work with, but you still need blockchain specific experience. And so you show people that by, you know, building something on your own. Okay, that's how you get experience outside the workplace. If you need a job to get experience, you know, that's, that's how it works. And so you take that portfolio piece, you show people that you know what you're talking about, and then you market yourself that way where people can, you know, see it on a website, click through it and use it, open source the code on GitHub so they can see that you wrote it and that you're worth talking to. And so if you got that, you're ready to start. And I know some people who are just getting started might think that's totally unbelievable, but you can definitely check out any of the videos on my YouTube homepage of the student success stories of people who have gone through this exact process. I mean, I've hired people personally who have gone through the trainings at DAP University and then reached out to me and applied for our jobs directly with this exact method. And so trust me, it works. Okay, so let's talk about going through the process of looking for jobs. And this is where you really want to play the volume game, okay? So, you know, the, the basic strategy is you're going to be looking for jobs, sitting at your resume in the portfolio specifically. The portfolio is what is going to set you apart and then going through the interview process, all right? And so how do you really increase the likelihood that you're just going to get a result? Again, the, the goal is the first job, not trying to optimize for every other feature like, you know, how much you're going to get paid or like all the other nice to haves. Like it's probably going to be better than most people's situation because you're going to be able to get into blockchain and then you're going to be able to ride that wave up as you gain experience and increase your skills. So that's how you increase the likelihood that someone's going to take a chance on you is applying to more places and playing that volume game. So how can you do that? Well, the best way is to start looking at as many job listings as possible. So that looks like using a lot of different websites to look for jobs. Okay. So you can use 
basically crypto specific jobs websites like cryptojobslist.com. You can look at lots of other results on Google for crypto jobs like crypto.jobs, cryptocurrencyjobs.co. All right. Or you can just use regular job websites like indeed.com, monster.com, hire.com. Lots of those have blockchain developer, you know, jobs as well, zip recruiter. But you want to use all those as like an aggregator to find you know, different postings that may not be cross posted on different platforms. That's going to give you the most total result because the whole idea here is the applying for as many places as possible sort of playing that volume game to see that you know person that might you know give you your first shot and so here's some tricks to use whenever you're searching for this exact job you want to try to find jobs that may not come up in your initial search results by kind of thinking outside the box a little bit and again this is what's going to help cut down your time to you know optimize for you know getting hired in that 90 day window rather than just waiting around for the perfect thing okay so um, one is, fil- you know, using different keywords on the platforms. So you might be looking for blockchain developer, okay, um, and then finding jobs that are relevant to that. You might want to look for other keywords like Solidity developer, okay, or Web 3.0 developer, okay. So you might be you know, looking for a Solidity smart contract role, and you may have to search for different keywords that are related to that before you find the exact you know, job that's going to match what you're looking for, okay. So you can see this one here, you know, Solidity fully remote, uh, salary, 140 to 145k per year. Okay, here's the experience of what they're looking for. So here's another tip. Um, whenever you're going and looking at these jobs, like if you'll say you're brand new, right? You might look at this job and say, "Hey, I don't quite feel qualified for this job." You might if you're a developer already and trying to transition in. But uh, if you feel like you're underqualified for a job, like try to still reach out to that company because if they are hiring anybody there's a chance they might hire you just maybe not for the job that's posted. Now, I'll talk about some tips on how to help that in a minute. You want to show that you have initiative and are trying to do some things that are above and beyond maybe your your current position. But that's another trick that you can use to find leads that may not be readily apparent on these websites, okay? So on the crypto-specific jobs, you know, you can look for uh, things that are specifically related to developers, things that are specifically related to smart contracts, can have better filtering criteria. But by using multiple websites, and then using multiple keywords that aren't always related, and then finding you know jobs where you may feel like you're underqualified, but seeing if they could still hire somebody, that's going to give you a lot more leads. Now I want to give you one final uh, tip here, which is let's say that you went in you know to get a smart contract developer job, okay, and it's a company that hires smart contract developers, and then you go through the entire interview process, and you're they're just like, hey. We're not ready to, you know, hire you. We don't think like you're right at the skill level we need for this specific position. You might be able to negotiate your way into a front end developer job there. Okay. Because you understand how to use smart contracts and you may be useful to them in that way. And there may be an opportunity for you to transition over to the smart contract side of things, you know, later or just get a different job in the industry once you've got that experience. Okay, that's another way to cut the learning curve. You're just trying to make sure you get hired as fast as possible. And you can work that angle from multiple angles. Maybe it's for getting a back end job. Maybe it's for getting some other like QA testing job. There's lots of different things that work around the smart contract ecosystem that you could probably provide value for to the company with your current skill level because the whole idea is focusing on how you can provide value. All right, so speaking of providing value, let's take that to the next you know, steps, which is basically, you know, contacting the company, applying for the job, and then looking for an interview. So throughout all that entire process, you want to focus on that as someone who is providing value and is there to help the company. They need to sense that in your outreach. They need to sense that in your interview and everything. Because I'm telling you, someone who's interviewed lots of people, um, the last thing I want to hear is somebody just tell them, like, like, talk about how great they are and how entitled they are and how they just want to get something out of this opportunity rather than help the person that they're working for. That's that's why somebody pays you in the first place. And entitlement's gonna be one of the first thing that absolutely kills your interview, especially if you're a beginner. So when you're writing some sort of outreach, right, you wanna talk about how you can provide that value how you're going to go above and beyond because if you're if you're new like that's what you have to do you're going to jump into a sink or swim situation where you're going to feel out of your depth in many cases and what they want to know is can you still be productive in their pipeline even if you don't know how to do something so you want to focus on how fast you can learn new things how quickly you learned you the skills how much of a self-starter you were in order to create this project that you're using in your portfolio 
and then go let them click through and use it. Talk about how you did that entire process and how you understand the you know in-demand skills that they are using in their workplace and how you can specifically provide value to their team and that you're doing willing to do whatever it takes in order to do that. And so that's what you do when you apply. You want to express that, you know, do the job application. Like if you're if there's a if it's a smaller company and the CEO has an email, email the CEO with that thing that I just told you about. Show me your portfolio and say, hey, I applied. I'm really looking forward to you know speaking with you. Just try to go above and beyond to let them know that you're hungry to work there. Okay, so now let's talk about going through the actual interview process. So a lot of people are going to freak out about this and say like, hey, I got to do everything I can to prepare for every interview. I have to you know, look at a million interview questions. I have to think about a million different coding challenges. Okay, you know, that, some of that stuff can help, but like, don't spend all your time doing that because the part of the strategy is to try to get as many interviews as you possibly can to where one of them is just a natural fit. And you know, you might you might fail some of the other interviews. Like that's probably going to happen, especially if you're brand new. Like not everybody's gonna hire you and take that chance. But by playing the volume game, like you're gonna increase that likelihood. How should you handle interviews then? Well, going back to like I said a minute ago, really focus on the fact that you're hungry that you want to provide value to this company and that you are prepared to do it. Like that's what your portfolio is for. That's what gives you that confidence. But don't pretend to know things that you don't know. Demonstrate a high, you know, willingness to learn, high willingness to hustle and basically try to come off as like not entitled at all, you know, curious and hungry. And that's really going to, you know, increase the likelihood that you're going to, you know, get a shot. Okay, so let's talk about feedback because what if this doesn't happen? Okay, what if what if you go through all this process and you don't, you know, end up getting hired. So uh, what I would try to do is try to find out why. Okay, you're not necessarily going to get an answer from everybody, but see if you can try to get some feedback on what you can work on because they might hire you later. Like you may be able to apply to the exact same companies if they liked you, but maybe it just wasn't a good time or maybe you didn't quite have what it takes and they say, hey, we want to see a little bit of progress in this area. We'll try to get that feedback because rejection always hurts. But if your goal really is to break in the industry, that's going to be some most valuable feedback that you can actually get from somebody who was, you know, I- interviewing you and saw some sort of deficiency. And again, you can, you can take that as, as feedback to improve upon those things and then repeat this process again, because eventually, like most likely, it's probably going to work. And by doing all these things, like you can increase the likelihood that you could actually accomplish this within a 90 day period if you're just trying to optimize for the time frame. Again, you need to play the volume game, look for any way that you can compromise, whether it's a job that may not 100% fit what you're looking for, but is still a good enough fit. Okay. And then there's always things you can do to speed this up. I mean, you could drop the price tag on what it costs to hire you. You can always lower your salary expectations. All right. Because I mean, think about it. If you were willing to work for a dollar, like there's going to be somebody that's going to hire you. Right. But that's not everybody's case. People want to get paid for their work. So just, you know, back that number off. If, if your salary expectations are a certain number and then like they say you're not ready. And then you know what the salary is supposed to be. It's like, oh, hey, well, you know, maybe I can work for less. And that might be a way to incentivize people uh, to take that chance on you in the first place as well. All right, so that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out. So then we'll learn about blockchain. And if you want to get started doing exactly what I'm talking about today, you, of course, need the skills to pay the bills so you can create that portfolio project. So how can you do that? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a master's shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.